start in 15 seconds. Microphone check, one, two, one, two. You look. It's been a bad afternoon. Usually I start off with peace and love, or good afternoon. But for many black mothers, family members, and loved ones, they're having a bad afternoon. It's only January, and we're well on our way repeating the same ignorance and evil that's been plaguing our community with over 200 homicides in 2020 in this small city we call Washington, D.C. But when leaders don't care, because the people don't care. I say this because we never fully recovered from the crack epidemic and the mass murders that swept through Washington, D.C. We had recently two 15-year-old 15 -year -old kids killed in our community. Just last night, on Moore's Road, I got the call from a queen let me know that another night, we had a 16-year-old boy in the hallway suffering from blood wounds, and he too was pronounced dead. Just last week, we had an eight-year-old girl shot in the back in this womb. And you hear this story over and over again. And it's become normal, normal to a lot of our people because we've been desensitized from the violence that's hurting our hearts because we have to keep going. If, I, if you are from this community and I ask you to raise your hand if you've been affected by gun violence, raise your hand. That's almost 100% of the room. And the sad reality is that bad things happen when good people do nothing. See, I, I often get the messages and ads on social media about what are we gonna do about this and what are we gonna do about that. But the reality is you cannot depend upon politicians, mayors, the police department to heal our community. It's a community problem. We all have a role to play, yes, absolutely. And I do agree that we have not done enough. See, when I got on the council and I started talking about the violence in the community because I was doing three visuals a week, no one wanted to hear it. What your heart is, then your church will be also. See, what I know is when I watch the social media, I see the parents of these young men and young ladies that are out of control of our community, twerking, dropping it like it's hot, doing the busted challenge, and even last night, the silhouette challenge. So I ask you, and I push you, when are we gonna have the spelling bee challenge? When are we gonna have the, the 24 challenge? When are we gonna have the grooming challenge or the etiquette challenge? We have to change the social norms in our community by starting with changing our mindsets. Oftentimes I see our young people on the social media talking to each other. I got a message this morning from someone who just passed recently. And the, someone said, I wish I would have killed him. I had a picture of him, his face on the end of a piece of weed stem saying smoking on such and such. This is not Chicago, man. The, the sad reality is that we are all interconnected one way or another. DC is too small. Oftentimes I'm in a long conversation with somebody and I'm talking about where you where you from, who you people. We all are related in some form or fashion. And so when you hurt somebody, it affects all of us directly and indirectly. See, I was on Go Hope Road the other day and saw the mother of Ed couldn't barely breathe because he sat outside of the 7-Eleven and had her son go across the street. And the next time she saw her son, he was coming out the store in a body bag. A college student. A college student. This is all our problem. And the more we point the finger, the more it's gonna keep happening and happening in our community. Because I see that even our kids, this is the age of the, uh, what's the best word I can use? Scammers. I'm gonna just keep it real. And we spent all these thousands of dollars. Little kid got on Fendi, Gucci, Prada, you name it, he got it. But when I check and see uh, a boy and get to know him a little more, he can't even spell that good. He can't say it's ABCs and one, two, threes. 
Yeah, he got a $5,000 outfit on. We have to change the mentality and mindset of our people. Dr. King said unity or non-existence. See, we cannot afford to be divided. And I hear a lot of people talking about uh, uh, we need this person to do this, do this, do this person to do this. But I do remember in about 2012, 2013, prior to me becoming a council member, they talked about closing our schools down. And I got so many calls and so many messages and people were outraged and disgusted that their school was going to close down. So I met with Murray and Murray. We had plenty of rallies. And you could, it was roughly 300 students in every school. There's four schools. That's over 1,200 students. You know how many parents showed up each rally? About 20. About 20 parents at each school. Yet the complaining has to stop. We got to get active in our community. Talk is cheap. And we've seen the duplicity with what happens with law enforcement. And I challenged my colleagues on the council, Mary Miriam Bowser, because I was on the calls when we had the riots down the Capitol, days prior to. And I seen a high executive level of meetings with the police departments about coordinating and having these set up in a strategy. But last year, we had 900 and 20 people shot in the District of Columbia. And I haven't seen the strategy yet. In the last four days, we had eight kids shot in our community, and I haven't seen the strategy yet. And it's on us to push the envelope, because the power lies in the people. See, I fight to change the narrative in our community. I remember when Commissioner uh, Salim Adolfo put a letter out to uh, put a moratorium on liquor stores. I followed up right behind her with another letter. Because my question is, how many more liquor stores do we need? <coughs> See, I had to fight two for nails to ensure that we get two brand new grocery stores in our ward. And it's coming, but that's still not enough for 150,000 residents east of Anacostia River. See, we are what we eat. And we feed ourselves poison, poison gonna come back out. Mm -hmm. And we're traumatized and face with mental agony in this community and hurt people, hurt people, but heal people, heal people. If a white kid got shot in Washington, D.C., the narrative would have been changed. We'd have had meetings, we'd have had DHS out there, uh, we'd have had the police department, we'd have had mental health services, everybody would have been outside. But a little boy, 16-year-old, got shot last night. And if I didn't tell you, most of you in this room wouldn't even know him. And it's Friday. And the beasts are sparking up even more. We don't know what's going to happen tonight. But the more we close our eyes and turn away, it's going to get closer and closer to our door. If it haven't been you yet, it will. If we don't do something. We knew that, in, that during the riots, over 3,400 people were coming to the city occupying hotels, Airbnb. Yet the narrative uh, from the police department, I said every day, it just, uh, Mr. Commissioner uh, Pixley just called me yesterday about the police coming from PG County to DC to run a jack of a little boy, 14 years old, and then we couldn't find him for hours, and he was there, he wasn't even the one to jump out of the car. I didn't hear or see the narrative when I'm running up into people's hotels and houses looking for guns, but it's in the black community, it's a double standard. But they don't care until we start caring. I'm going to say it again. They don't care until we start caring. No one else is coming to save us but us. And I don't want to hear the narrative because it's budget season that we don't have the money. See, what I do know is when I first got on the council in 2017, we had a $14.5 billion budget. Now we had a $16.7 billion budget. We, may, we have more back-to-school programs, recreation centers, activities for our kids, when we had a $9 billion budget. So don't tell me we can't. Can't is not in the man's vocabulary. See, where your heart is, then your treasure will be also. See, I know that between, on MLK, between Good Hope Road and Howard Road, a billion dollars is about to be spent right there. So 
So we're not going to advocate for a recreation center for a community that, that know that hot red clothes, all red clothes, catching red clothes, blue red clothes, holiday red clothes, number 11 boys and girls club clothes, yet we wonder why our kids are out in the streets. It's by design. It's by design. Then we ask, why, why are these kids off the chain? Because we left them helpless and hopeless. And that's on us. That's our kids. That's our generation. That's our future. See, we passed out about 900 meals a day for our seniors during COVID. And when I went past Mimi House and Henson Reeds, I noticed a group of young men in the back almost every day. And I said, y'all want something to eat? They say, no, Trey, give us a cash app so we can get some curry out. And I went back to that house Saturday only to realize that was the same young man who was shot of Johnson three nights ago. And my heart was hurt. Because I remember arguing with DPR about closing the wreck down. The person who was responsible for opening the wreck had the door locked. And the football team with Coach Virgil had, he was using the bathroom outside because we had a wreck, a public wreck, but the, the doors was locked on the wreck. It's the same community. We lost this young man. And so we have to step up and take responsibility. Because 920 people shot in our community is far too many. Because you, you count 900 last year, you count the 600 a year before that, you count the 500 years before that. And you fast forward 10 years from now, you're not talking about gentrification, you're talking about genocide. genocide. And we out of here. And it's us doing it to us. Yeah. I encounter young men every day and pouring to them, because I raised two generations of black men in this community, and with some just graduated from college. And I have a conversation with them. And it baffles me how this young man is so smart and so intelligent, so witty, and so creative. He said, Trey, let me get $20. But yet, this same young man is getting access to a $1,500 gun, but don't have $20 or something to eat. That should make you think, what the hell is happening to our babies and our community? And I'm seeing that the old heads in the community used to be 45, 50. The old heads, 24 and putting a battery in these youngest backs. And they say you reap what you sow. No, you reap more than what you sow. And the issue is that we erase God out of our community. Out of our schools, out of our homes, out of our churches, out of our mosques, out of our synagogues. The spirit of God is gone. And we wonder why the village is sick. Our village is sick. See, I had a conversation with a group of men, and we were talking. Only to learn that out of the six people in that group, three of them had already been shot before. And one of them just came from home from beating a body. That should tell you what's happening in our community with our black men. And the fastest growing prison population right now is African American females. She so spent a lot of time, and this ain't gonna be a regular press conference. Because you know what I'm saying is the truth. And we talk about what's happening during COVID, the amount of deaths we had during COVID. The issues we had is exacerbated before COVID even hit the community. We've had more deaths in Oregon than anywhere in Washington, D.C., but people don't seem to care. Lawrence is on that side of the river. They're still on that side of the river. See, what I do know is that people can't afford to live anywhere else in Washington, D.C. as the price of living goes up. Because when I first got in office, the early median income was $114,000 a year on average that people was making in the DMV. Right now, that number is at $121,000 per year. Yet the poor black people in this community is getting poorer and poorer and poorer. Yet we taking our money, spending it with all these designs. It's not going to do a damn thing for our community. It's on us to change our paradigms of how we think, feel, and act in our community. Unity or non-existence. They used to have a saying that you're here today and gone tomorrow. No, you're here today and gone today. I didn't have those conversations and got that call. 
Then I'm talking to the young man, and he think he got it all figured out. Then I get a call from one of his relatives asking, Mr. White, you think you can speak at my son's funeral? Can you do a letter for his ritual? Oh, my son just got locked up. Can you send him a letter on his behalf as a curse reference? You really want me to do a curse reference? Your son was hard-headed, a follower, misdirected, a get with, a flunky. Mm. Wreaking havoc on the community. Current weapons, militarized weapons in our community. We gotta ask ourselves, where are these guns coming from? Hundreds and hundreds of guns, 30, 40, 50 round creeps. See, what if I go to the crime scene and I'm saying 32 shells on the ground? Like we living in Baghdad or Iraq somewhere. This is a residential community. I've been in Southeast all my life, even on the crack epidemic and when we used to be called, uh, uh, what was it called? The murder capital. I've never seen this many babies, kids, and women. Shot in my entire life. A one year old this week, an eight year old last week in a car, two 15 year olds three days ago, a 16 year old last night. And I think about the Makai Wilsons and the Dayvon McNeils. Their life was cut down at eight, nine, ten years old because some idiot thought he was cool because he didn't value his life because we didn't teach him. See, it ain't all his fault, it's our fault. Because we was teaching the wrong thing to do. And, and tearing down our community as men. See, our queens, our African queens, have held down the community for three, four, five, six generations. Come on. But it's time for the men to stand up. So you want to cut off the body? Cripple the head. And I'm seeing the talking on the Instagram. Back and forth. Enough is enough, guys. This is going to be your regular press conference. This is a call to action. This is a call for the city officials, including myself, because I don't get a pass. I don't get a pass. That means you don't get a pass. Mm. We asked for Mario Bowser to declare a state of emergency here in Washington, D.C. Because our black and brown boys and girls are gone far too quick in our community. If we, if, insanity is doing the same thing over and over and expecting a different outcome. We expect we're going to do business as usual, and we haven't had one meeting about the violence yet in our community. See, I submitted a 14-page proposal to all my city council members to get it funded at $36 million. And the first year, you know how much money we got in the budget for crime prevention? $750,000 to spread around D.C. At the time, it was a $15.5 billion budget. Yet I know we're giving developers on this, on this street, this one street right here, a total of about $46 million right here on this one street. And this street is called Martin Luther King Jr. Avenue. Mm. Where's this street? Damn shame. Because we're not outraged enough. We're not loud enough. We don't care enough. Because too much division. This hood versus that hood. This crew versus that crew. And this family versus this family. And this mother versus this daughter. This father versus this son. Now or never. I want to pause for a moment. <clears throat> To give an announcement because I feel like in my heart that we're not united enough. Whatever opposition you have towards your neighbor, your friend, we gotta put that aside, you guys. We gotta put it aside. It don't matter what happened. The population for African Americans, blacks in this community is shrinking each and every day. This used to be chocolate city. Now we had we was at 47%. The census just went out. The numbers are going to get lower and lower because we suffer from diabetes, high blood pressure, COVID-19, cancer. You name it, we have it. So we can't afford to have office. Am I my brother's keeper? Yes, I am. Am I my brother's keeper? Yes, I, yes, I, am. I am. And see, we see that mentality and learn to love self. 
and understand my, my culture and my history, it's easy for me to take a gun and shoot my brother. Because when I shoot him, I'm already shooting myself. See, when somebody pull up on Royal Road, or Stanton Road, or W Street, or 4th Street, and I still can't understand that for the health, for the life of me. When the police department is supposed to be assigned to 4th Street, we had over 18 people shot in the 4200 block of 4th Street and 3rd Street in the last two years. Same exact location. Then you go down to 6th Street, you're gonna see the same exact thing. And it's on us to intervene. I do want to recognize my, my credible messages in the room. You can raise your hand from Cure the Streets, Alliance of the Sermon, the Love Home Movement. I'm going to tell you right now, we doing you an injustice because we're not doing enough. See, when I used to do violence intervention, it's about 30 people. We used to have at least 150 people. And we met every day with a conference call in the morning. We were in the community, we were in the recreation centers, we were in the traps, and we were in the schools. We were in the jails. See, we knew who was coming home that was a problem to the community before they even came home. See, there's no correlation. Because you got this group beefing with this group. This person talking about this person. And a house divided against itself will never stand. And time out for the rhetoric. We have to call to action. Every day I get a call from an organization or a person saying, I got to do this in the community, do this in the community. And they ask me, where's the funding? Where's the funding to support people's nonprofit ambitions and goals in our community that want to give a helping hand? See, what you do is you take a little bit of money, I'm going to say it because it needs to be saved, and you sprinkle it on the ground. And we out fighting for it amongst the organization, beef with each other over that little bit of funding. Yet a developer from Virginia can get a piece of property and land right here on MLK for a dollar, and the government just give them $15 million. Wow. Who can win in that type of situation? That's leverage when you go to the bank. See, we have to control the economics and the education in our community. We are the only people that decide to let the school system educate our kids. We send them up there when they come home to their homework, that's it. Welcome to the rights of passage programs in our community. Concerned black men, the retreats in our community, can't break them. Come on, man. All the stuff we had, we had more when we had less. Mm. We better wake up. Can we say wake up? Wake up. We better wake up. Wake up. Because we're asleep. In the words of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., I'm going to close with this. He said we must learn to live together as brothers and sisters or purge together as fools. This Wednesday at 6.30 p.m., we have a Zoom conference call. If you have an idea or organization or business to want to get involved, we call on everybody to get on the Zoom. Put your information in the chat. We're going to be following up because it's budget season. It's $16.7 billion on the line. That was your tax dollars. That's not the government's money. That's your money. And you get what you fight for. See, we got the new rec 40 wrecks coming to the wall because we fought for you know who came in to fight for? Our senior citizens. Mm. They was in wheelchairs, on buses, Metro Access, Seabird. So it's on us. We're going to organize. We're going to fight for what we need. And if you're not with us, you're against us. Hello. And if you're in the community, and you think you're just going to ride around, keep shooting people, and you calling grandma who saw she did the police asked who, who did it. You said it was a, a young man with a, a, a black coat on, some blue jeans, some teens ran that way, and you said she hot. No, you hot. You hot. See, we forgot the definition of snitching. That's a citizen. I never heard nobody call grandma hat. Come on, man. It's a new day. And we got to set the nourishment of who we want to see happen in our community. Unity or non resistance. Thank you. God bless. That's my council. Questions? <laughs> Sam Fool. Uh, yeah. Trey, I, uh, Council Member uh, White. The, uh, the mayor yesterday named uh, a director of gun violence prevention. Uh, what are your thoughts about that? What role do you think the person could play? Is that a necessary position? So I, I heard that uh, Sister Linda Holly Hopper will be leading that division. Uh, and it's my hope that. 
Uh, we uh, and, I, and I know Linda has been with DYS for a number of years. She's been working with high-risk individuals in the community for a long time. But it has to be also a community-led approach. See, the government, we, we take too long to, get to make things happen. See, when this an argument happens between a young guy over a girl, we know what's happening before we get to the government. And so that's all well and good to put in the government. We got to put resources into the community on the ground. Because the bureaucracy and creating up, we got the one's office, and we got a new office, we're gonna have another office, another office, get us a buck. At nighttime, these individuals go home. We still here. Here in AK-37, AK-47s, going off all night long. And so that's well and good, but I'm just praying that it's going to, and I believe that uh, Sister uh, Harper will do that, but we have to put more money into the community instead of making government larger. So, so when you say more money in the community, and you're saying basically... So tell me this, in, in, in two, between, 2000, between 2006 and 2010, we had a lot of money in the community for nonprofits. But you can go to D.C., you family investment trust to apply for a grant to run your program. Now, if you ask a nonprofit right now, what do they go to apply for funding to help their program inside the school, after school in their community, they couldn't tell you. They couldn't tell you. How do I know? Because they called my office asking me. So you're saying the government should put more money into nonprofit, community-based. You have to put the money where the people are. And it's not just about money. It's about mental organizations. It's about career training. It's about wraparound services. It's about quality food options. It's about substance abuse uh, services in our community. Mental health services in our community. All that has to be coordinated. Because while we focus on this one person in the household who's deemed to be the shooter, guess what? He got two other brothers. He got a sister. And almost nine times, boy, he has 82% single parent households, predominantly African American females. Because the black man has been removed from the family. And we wonder why we, wonder why we malfunction. Uh, we have a new uh, police chief, and he's black, and he grew up east of the river. And because of those facts, doesn't it seem like he would be more sensitive uh, to some of the issues that you're talking about as opposed to the previous chief? Thank you, Mr. Wright. I think that um, I, I like uh, Chief Conti. He's always been straightforward with me. I, I've always had issues with law enforcement since I was a kid. You know, I had run in his Sam, though, no, he didn't see me, you know, my ups and downs over the years. But nonetheless, I say that police is not the solution to addressing crime in our community. If we're waiting for police to do it, we're going to be waiting forever for them to address crime in our community because the reality is most of the police on that police department don't even live in D.C. and don't care nothing about you. You know what I'm saying? All police are bad. But what I do know is that uh, we used to have a side by side bang, we used to have officer friendly. See, when I played for the police, boys and girls, but we had Officer Williams. You had an issue going on at home, you needed some food, you needed a couple of dollars in the McDonald's, right? You can go talk to Officer Williams. Those relationships have been broken down. And I see DC police have make, make, made some change towards some reform, but we're so far behind. We can't wait for the police department to do it. It's men in the community that have to step up and do it. We have a lot of men coming home from incarceration that tore up this community. They coming back saying they want to help out in the community. You know what the nerds didn't want to lose was when we did the program for uh, for credible messengers and violence interrupters, and we are paying people not to commit crime. Nah, we try to empower them to take back your own community and create your own businesses and circulate your own dollar. So you, can, so you don't have to be dependent upon the government to fund you because we got a pile of money we circulate each and every day in our own community. Any other questions? Finally, for me, I, so basically, I'm just trying to get an understanding of what you're saying. So you're saying basically that you think that the government should put more money into community-based organizations to uh, to that would be a way of stemming the violence. What I know, Sam, is that whenever there is a, a gap or need for a service, see. I remember when they said we don't have any amenities in the community, right? The developer put together a plan 
and said he needed $30 million in tax increment, tax increment finance to make the project work. And we found the money for that in a matter of a year. When you say it's an issue with black and brown boys and girls getting killed in the streets, well, we don't have the no money for that. It costs about a million, more, how much, about a million dollars per homicide, per homicide in this city. Are we gonna find money for that? Cause the judge gonna get paid, the coroner's gonna get paid, the detective's gonna get paid, mm. the firm gonna cost 20,000, they gonna get paid. We can take those resources and, and invest it on the front end instead of on the back end. Because now they, they tore down all these rents in this community, now we see the backlash of the divestment of resources in our community. Question? Yes, yeah, so that's what we were just before the press conference. It was no money. People were just dying. It was front was visuals everywhere. Nothing was being done. After the money that went to the CY coordinating council for youth violence prevention with the Peace of Hollis, uh, East River Collaborative, uh, ERCBC, but when that money was vanished, they just left. It, money was gone. And that was like eight years ago. And so what happened was we pushed the nurse to get money in the budget. The only way to get money in the budget is to put it into uh, a government agency. And so the government agency that was supposed to be for, for a valid disruption went apart on what is called the NEAR Act. It was introduced by Council Member Duffy, and it went unfunded for a couple of years. So we pushed the narrative and got it funded. When it got funded, the warrants office was created, which is the office of neighborhood safety and engagement. And they didn't have, they didn't have any staff to get a building, a staff. And so once they got that money, they ended up getting power to do smaller grants. But what happened was the more we put money into that to build that, uh, we couldn't get out to the streets fast enough. This during the time, I don't know if you all remember, but this one, um, Bundy got killed. Mm. And we had a big old meeting uh, at Checking Enterprises in the back in the secret garden behind we, we at. And Chairman Phil Mendelson was there, Robert White was there, I was there, Carl, the Attorney General Carl Singh was there, and we was trying to figure out how to get money to the streets. And so I called King McDuffie and, and, uh, and count, uh, chief, Assistant Chief, I mean, sorry, Attorney General Carl Racine and trying to figure out how we can get more money in the community. And Carl had, had got some money from a lawsuit or something like that. And he was able to get money out. And so he was able to get a pot of money to put simultaneously waiting for the other money to hit the streets because people were still dying in the streets. And so uh, in, in the long range of things, it was money put out on this side, an RFP that someone could apply for to get the grant on this side, and it was another RFP for money put out on this side. And as a result, two different entities or several other different, it was more than one grant put out. Several people applied for it and several people got the grants. But I do agree it needs to be coordination. Coordination. Because when you're working with this, this neighborhood crew, they beefing with somebody else. So you can't just say you're working with this group. You got to go work with that group too. Because we all know what happened. We asked a young man to get in school, put your gun down, turn your life around. His, his, his ops, as we call it, that's still talking and still trying to get out. And so something that happens to him and he brings everybody else back into the uproar. And there's no breaks. When I was doing you three, she remember? We was doing you five, and we didn't get no days off. You was on call like the, like the fire department. You got that call, you get up to go outside to see what's going on. And most of the time, we was able to de-escalate de de because we was all involved on the front end doing work every day with programming. And so we need to rethink a, a real comprehensive strategy. That's what we push the mayor to do. ASAP, while brown and black boys and girls are dying in the streets. Any other questions? What can we all do to support? Because I'm going to be at the meeting on Wednesday. I really would like to see a way to consolidate the mass efforts to really get on the same page. Thank you. So the question is, um, what can we do to consolidate the mass effort and get, get everyone an opportunity to participate? Um, I think that we 
Uh, we, I know from my office, we created a strategy um, that involved workforce development, provide wraparound services, crisis prevention, mental health services, substance abuse, and we laid that plan before the council members, but it didn't get funded totally in the budget. And there was also a part where we had to bring in the community because the community is the key part to increasing violence in the community. So we made it so much government. And people are afraid to say this and do this for, for, for afraid that they might get written up at work and fired from their job. Even coming to a press conference like this is risky. For somebody who don't have a gun, that's going outside every day, no badge, and trying to stop crying with no vest on. And it don't happen overnight. And so what we want to do is set the parameters to create a conversation for people to chime in and give us your ideas. What, what, you, what, did you, what it is that you do? It might be three people to do the same thing. You all need to be collaborating. You might need to do a joint grant and go out to one branch yourself. See, what happened is you might got three organizations that do the same thing, but they want to fight and argue about getting one grant. And a small pile of money, not even sustainable. Can't even serve one family. And so uh, we, we have a strategy. There are other people who have different visions um, that they, they like to incorporate. We're trying to figure out what works. And it's budget season. And if we don't shake that tree, then it's on us. The tree can will get so old. Clarify something. You're asking for a state of emergency in the ward or throughout the city? Throughout the city. See, violence is just not happening here in Ward 8. It's happening all over the city. In fact, it's happening all, in every uh, city or black community all across the United States. It's just not isolated to Ward 8. See, that's the nerd city of you out there, Ward 8, but now it's happening all over the city. Um, and so, we asking for a CY, we asking for a, a comprehensive strategy meeting. Um, I think we had some points in a press, press release that we sent uh, to speak to that. Uh, we wanted to also get the government agencies and organizations to coordinate uh, certain, concerted efforts to figure out how they're going to chip in because some of the money that's going towards public safety is coming out of the police department. The Department of uh, DHS, Department of Human Services needs to chip in. Um, the Department of uh, Behavioral Health needs to chip in. Um, our mental health agencies need to chip in. Every agency needs to be chipping in. So I'm sure we talked about getting the violence interrupters in the schools. I know we're in COVID, not in school yet. But that was four chances ago. I had this meeting in 2017, and it's 2021, and we still haven't fully gotten to the schools yet. I think we had two workers in the school out of all the high schools and middle schools in this area in, this area in the last four years, too. Commission. Thank you. What can we do as commission to um, help the efforts and help the council in these fights? Well, 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 one of the things, and I'm going to be quite frank, there's too much infighting going on with agency commissioners. I don't know how many meetings I watched or attended, but the argument and fighting just happened in a whole meeting and nothing gets done. A house to battle against itself will never stand. And the reality is there's too much development coming in our community, and ASCs have a responsibility to be able to safeguard uh, for our community before they hit the streets. And there are far too many commissioners that have been in the past. I know you're a new commissioner, I want to thank you for your service. Also, Commissioner Crawford, who's um, as well, that, that's been selling our community out. Getting a couple of dollars here to let the developers do what they want to do. And so what you can do is join in on that. I don't have all the solutions. But I know each person in this, in this room, each person on, on Facebook Live, each person on Instagram got a gift that God gave them. They can offer this community. You might want to do chess. You might want to do a debate team. You might want to do a jump ball contest. You might want to do a rights of passage program. Each and every gift in this room, in this community, adds value. And, I, and the reality is, how I got the way I am today, because I was doing a lot of this work when I had no title. No title. You don't need no title to do God's work. You don't need no position to do God's work. You just need a real investor that God can use to make a difference in our community. And so we got to find those best. Get an auntie in the community that can teach a little girl sewing. It's, it's, a, it's a mentor in the community 
that gets used to the guys IT. They hacking their phones every day. So we got a lot of gifts already in our community. Everything we need in our community is already here. We just too divided. If we don't have any more questions or comments, I want to thank everyone for coming out today. But no, we got to, can we say action? Action. We got to get, we have, we got to have an action. We have an action. And we got to push the envelope. Action, man. Thank you. God bless. Thank you so much.